The Samsung Galaxy S23 series is finally official. I've had some early hands-on time and here's everything you need to know. What's up guys, Safir on Super Saf TV. And as always, we're gonna be breaking down all of the differences between these devices, Super Saf style. So to start off with, as expected, we do have three new Samsung Galaxy S23 devices. There's the S23, the S23 Plus, as well as the S23 Ultra. Now the S23 Ultra does have a very similar design to the S22 Ultra that we saw last year. With the biggest design difference on the S23 Ultra being that we have a new curvature on the edges, which gives you more flat surface area. So it's not as curved as the S22 Ultra. The S23 and the S23 Plus are flat on the front and back, but they now do have a new design compared to last year. And they've adopted the triple ring design that we initially saw on the S22 Ultra. Four colors across the board, phantom black, cream, green, and lavender. Now, there are likely to also be some additional exclusive colors available from samsung.com. And if you are thinking of buying one of the new S23 devices, then you can use my affiliate link down in the description below, which will also give you some credit. Now, the S23 and the S23 Plus do have more rounded off corners, whereas the S23 Ultra has more squared off corners in line with no devices that we've seen previously. Now that is because the S23 Ultra, like the S22 Ultra, does have an enclosed S Pen. Now we'll talk about the S Pen a little bit later, but all devices do have an IP68 water and dust resistant rating and they now do have Gorilla Glass Victus 2. I believe these are some of the first devices with Gorilla Glass Victus 2, and this means improved drop performance on rougher surfaces like concrete. Now, I'm not somebody who does drop tests, so I'm not gonna be testing this out myself. Samsung is also using more recycled components compared to last year, so we've got 12 instead of six. Right now, let's look at the displays. So the display sizes are pretty much the same as what we had last year. 6.1 inches for the S23, 6.6 inches for the S23 Plus, and 6.8 inches for the S23 Ultra. Now we do have the Infinity O cutout in the middle of all devices with small bezels, so you do get a very high screen to body ratio. Dynamic AMOLED 2X with up to 120 Hertz for the refresh rate. And now all of the devices have a peak brightness of 1750 nits. Now that isn't an improvement in a peak brightness for the S23 Ultra, but it is for the S23 and the S23 Plus. And there are devices that have a higher peak brightness out there, but Samsung seems to be concentrating more on their advanced vision booster technology, which automatically adjusts based on lighting. Right, so those are the similarities. Now in terms of the display differences, the S23 Ultra has a Quad HD Plus resolution versus the full HD Plus resolution on the S23 and the S23 Plus. So details are gonna be a little bit sharper. On the S23 Ultra also has LTPO 3.0 technology, which means it can go all the way down to just one hertz, making it more efficient. The S23 and the S23 Plus only go down to around 48 hertz, which is still good, but the S23 Ultra does get that edge and it is gonna be helpful with that higher screen resolution, which is gonna be pushing out more pixels. So overall, excellent displays across the board from Samsung as expected. And all devices do have an in-display fingerprint scanner. Now this is the same as what we had last year. So it is the Gen 2 Qualcomm 3D Sonic Sensor, which in my experience is the best in-display fingerprint scanner out there. Right, now let's move on to the cameras. Hey, SideSaf here. You haven't seen me in a while, but I have been in the background working away without any pay or food. But, but, but anyway, I just wanted to remind you that if you haven't already, then do consider subscribing because there's lots of Super Saf style comparisons coming up on here. Right, I'm gonna get back to work. Right, you guys heard side Saf, not about the no food and no pay, that, that's just, yeah, just ignore that, ignore that. But don't ignore the fact that you should subscribe and hit that bell icon for more content coming up. Right, so the cameras. Let's start off with the S23 and the S23 Plus. So the camera hardware seems to be pretty similar. So we do have a triple rear facing camera setup, a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, a 50 megapixel primary camera, and a 10 megapixel telephoto camera, which is gonna give you three times optical zoom and 30 times digital zoom. The S23 Ultra, however, does firstly have a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, which has autofocus, 
which means you'll be able to get macro shots as well from that ultra wide camera. It has similar telephoto cameras to what we had last year. So we've got three times optical zoom as well as 10 times periscope zoom, which can go all the way up to 100 times digital zoom, space zoom as they call it, if you like taking pictures of the moon. But the primary camera is now new. It is the new HP2 sensor from Samsung, which has a 200 megapixel resolution. Now, as far as I'm aware, the sensor size is similar to what we had last year, but it now has new adaptive pixel technology, which combines 16 pixels into one large pixel for brighter, more detailed shots in low light. Now, to really see how good this sensor actually is, I'm gonna be doing lots of super sad style comparisons, so do stay tuned for those. We've got a new selfie camera across the board. This is 12 megapixels, and it also has autofocus. And what's great is this is also gonna work across lots of apps. So you'll be able to get all of that processing and the autofocus in apps like Instagram and Snapchat, I'm told. We've also got improvements for video. So now we have 8K up to 30 frames a second. Traditionally, for the past few years, although Samsung devices have been able to shoot at 8K, it's only been up to 24 frames a second. However, it looks like, as far as I can see, that you can only shoot at 30 frames a second, not at 24 frames a second, which is the correct frame rate. I would have liked to have had the option of shooting at both, but anyway, we do have 8K 30 frames a second, and it's not gonna crop in as much as Samsung devices traditionally tend to do so. Portrait video has now also had an update, so instead of full HD, you will be able to shoot at 4K UHD, and Super Steady has finally had an update, and you will be able to shoot Super Steady at Quad HD. Now this does seem like a direct response to Apple because the iPhone 14 Pro and Pro Max have the cinematic mode, which is the equivalent at 4K and also action mode, which is the equivalent to super steady at a high resolution. So I'm definitely excited to do some comparisons and test these out. Now you might be wondering that a lot of the camera hardware seems to be the same, but how can we do have these improvements? Well, a lot of that is thanks to the new ISP image signal processor. And that is because we now have a new chipset. It is the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. And the good news is that this is gonna be the chipset across the board. Traditionally, Samsung devices have an Exynos chip for certain regions, in particular Europe, but in other regions, they have the Qualcomm chip and that has always created some inconsistencies. This year, Samsung has gone fully on the 8 Gen 2 and it's also a custom chip for Galaxy devices. So it's called the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for Galaxy. Now this is gonna give you a slightly higher clock speed compared to the standard 8 Gen 2. And in terms of performance, I expect these to be absolutely great. Some of the highest performing Android devices out there. And that's also gonna be thanks to the LPDDR5X RAM that we've got across the board. The S23 and the S23 Plus have just eight gigabytes of RAM. The S23 Ultra is gonna come with either eight or 12 gigabytes of RAM. Now in terms of storage, both the S23 Plus and the S23 Ultra start at a base of 256 gigabytes. The S23 will start at 128 gigabytes. And all devices at 256 gigabytes and above will have UFS 4.0 technology, which is gonna be even faster. Now the S23 Ultra does go all the way up to one terabyte if you're somebody who likes to store a lot on your smartphone, especially if you're gonna be shooting 8K, that might be useful. And I'm surprised that I have to still mention this, but people keep asking this in the comments. No, there is no expandable storage. We haven't had expandable storage on the Galaxy S device for a few years now. Now, as expected, all devices do have stereo speakers with Dolby Atmos, so we have one in the earpiece and one bottom firing. They all do sound really, really good. We've got Wi-Fi 6E across the board now as well, so you can get really fast Wi-Fi speeds if you've got a compatible router. And the S23 Plus and the S23 Ultra do have ultra wideband technology, the S23 does not. Now, the S23 Ultra, as mentioned earlier on, does have the enclosed S Pen. I'm personally somebody who likes to use the S Pen occasionally and it's great for some quick doodles or editing images or signing documents. Now, as far as I can see, there are no improvements to the S Pen compared to last year. That's not necessarily a bad thing because the S Pen is still, I would say, the best pen on any smartphone out there with very, very low latency. Right, now let's look at the batteries. So the S23 Ultra has the same size battery compared to what we had last year, so it's 5,000 milliamps. The S23 and the S23 Plus, however, 
do have slightly larger batteries compared to last year, 200 milliamps more on each device. Now, in terms of battery life, because we do have the new 8 Gen 2 chip, which is a lot more efficient, we should be getting better battery life across the board on all of these devices. For charging, there are really no changes in terms of charging. The S23 does have a maximum of 25 watts of wide charging. The S23 Plus and the S23 Ultra do have a maximum of 45 watts of wide charging. None of the chargers are included in the box. Again, something that people are still a little bit surprised about. On wireless charging, we do have 15 watts of wireless charging on all of these devices with Samsung's PowerShare reverse wireless charging. So you will be able to charge other devices on the back of these. Right, for software, we do have One UI 5.1 on all devices. And Samsung has promised four generations of Android software updates, as well as five years of security updates, which is among the best out there. Finally, let's talk about pricing. There's some good news and there's some not so good news. If you're in the US, there's good news because the S23 series is starting at the same price as the S22 series did last year. And on top of that, you will be getting double the storage on the S23 Plus and the S23 Ultra for that same price as last year. However, in other regions, in particular in the UK, there has been a price increase. Now I know that's also down to inflation and the government completely messing up the Great British Pound. But anyway, you will be paying a little bit more here in the UK compared to what you did last year. However, the S23 Plus and the S23 Ultra, if we do compare the 256 gigabyte versions, which you now get it as a base, compared that to last year, then it will be similar in price. Now, as mentioned earlier on, if you are thinking of purchasing one of the new S23 devices, then you can use my exclusive affiliate link down in the description below, which is gonna give you some credit. And there's also some really good trading deals on the Samsung website. So that is the S23 series. What do you guys think of it? Are you gonna be picking one up? And what other videos would you like me to do with it? As mentioned, there will be a lot more videos coming up. So if you do wanna see them first, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss that coverage. I'm gonna be leaving some related videos here and here. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then don't forget to smash that like button. Thanks for watching. This is Saf on Super Saf TV. And I'll see you next time.